Making a successful indie game starts with the correct game idea. Let's take a look at the vast list of game ideas for your next game. And instead of just talking about these ideas, in this video we will look at first, playable prototypes with source code available. Then, 300 game mechanics, the game ideas community, and lastly I'm going to share a few other resources that I recommend. Alright, let's kick things off with playable prototypes. You know, that brilliant idea in your head might sound fantastic, but until you build it and play it, you won't know for sure if it's actually fun. And that's why prototype is important. And that's what we have here available today. Real prototypes of game ideas and mechanics with source code available. Even if you're using a different game engine, playing with these prototypes and seeing how they were put together can be very insightful. And hey, even just watching the video can spark some inspiration for your next project. The link in the description will lead you to the online construct editor. There you can click on browse examples and you find a list that we'll be looking at in this section of the video. And by the way, you can play with these prototypes without even installing them on your PC. Let's start with this one. Here I gotta defeat this boss in a quite challenging setting. The controls work in a way as if the boss was locked in in the middle of the screen, similar to the targeting system that we see in many third-person games. It's quite challenging to dodge all the attacks of the enemy and to properly time the attacks, so I can imagine this being expanded to a third-person action game, action RPG, or a Souls-like, and this example also shows a pretty interesting use of assets. The scenario is 3D, but it's quite low poly and all the characters are 2D. If we open the game we can see that the assets, although they have an interesting art that is quite nice, they are relatively simple to make if we compare this with a full 3D model that has to be animated and so on. And if we look at the code behind the game, it's quite simple. We can see here the timer behind the boss, the way the player movement is controlled and everything. Interesting example, can serve as an inspiration, we could expand this and make a, a full game in this visual style and with this sort of gameplay. And with different bosses and so on. Very interesting. Let's take a look at another example. Picture a game similar to Contra or Cuphead, where you fight big bosses with complex movements and so on. Yeah, this, this is an interesting kind of game and I can see this being expanded to have different bosses, multiplayer and so on. Interesting. Now this is more of a puzzle game, it's similar to Doodle God, which was a mobile game where you have to combine different elements in order to create additional puzzle pieces, let's say. So here, if I combine, for example, wind with earth, then I get this new element right here. I'm not sure exactly what it is this, and yeah, let me see what else I can mix here. Yeah, so here I got a sort of stone and... While I was playing with this one, I took a time to notice that we had water in the bottom. So combining water with wind, for example, gives clouds and so on. So interesting game. And if you look at the source code, it's pretty simple the way it works. And we have here the different elements that the game allow you to create. This can be, of course, expanded upon. We see a 3D map here. Quite interesting example. Then here we have another action shooter game, so it's a top-down shooter. Um, what I find interesting about this example is how the controls, the, the way you, you shoot, you can see that there is some sort of magnetism between the, the aim of the character and the enemies. And it's quite a simple game, but of course this is the styles of Smash TV and Rambo and this old-school, old-style uh, top-down shooters. Looking at how this game is made is also interesting. We can see the colliders, the chunks that they use to compose the scenario, the sprite of the enemies that points to eight different directions, they are quite simplistic to a huge effect. I can imagine this being a multiplayer or even you controlling the rest of the team. Nice stuff. This example is a Bomberman style game. Of course it's a genre that's already well known, people recognize this as Bomberman, but think about these mechanics mixed with the rest of the mechanics that we're going to see on the rest of the video. Here we have an asteroid clone. But what is interesting about this example is all the juice and effects that we see here. So if you pay attention, you see that whenever I accelerate, we have a distortion in the background. Whenever I shoot, there is some screen shake, particles, and th this example is full of juice. And picture how this idea can be expanded. You can control your ship and then maybe you can land your ship. 
and whenever you land your ship we can play the action game similar to the one we saw before the top-down shooter so we can mix and mash these ideas these examples and that's the beauty of it so if you look here the effects are quite simplistic but the the overall let's say juice of the game is, is really interesting in this example now we have a geometry dash kind of game the visuals are quite interesting here we don't have 3d models per se just primitives with the right sort of texture uh, it's an interesting visual although not my kind of game here we have an isometric puzzle game where you gotta break all the floors and then get to the exit i spent quite some time playing this game because it's very simple yet very addicting very interesting i love the visuals it's very minimalistic not so many different colors and it's still this uh, isometric aesthetic it's really pleasing to look at so of course there are not too many mechanics in here, but we could expand on this and make so that this can be a more interesting puzzle. Very addictive, very nice to play. Nice visuals. I really love this dungeon crawler. Here we have the classic dungeon crawler where you move, you only rotate 90 degrees and you have to explore the dungeon. It's more of a visual prototype, but it really shows how a 2D gameplay within an environment that is 3D can be really powerful. We have an example called Legend of Emberland. That was released on steam and there's a number of other games that explore this sort of classics and it shows how simple prototypes like this could be expanded to a full game i had to edit this one so i went to the editor and i changed here uh, this wall so that i could get out of this dungeon so let's run the game once again and going into the exit what is interesting is that it's a 2d scenario so i could edit remove this wall and now I can get to the outside and we can see that the background is actually a 2D background so we get uh, this immersive effect only using sprites and 2D art really neat stuff this is an example of a car selection screen I guess it could work for characters as well interesting example something that can be expanded upon this example is quite minimalistic gameplay but I have to say that I kind of got hooked basically here we have very basic shapes textures and this billboard sprite for the character and it's really interesting to play so once again simplistic gameplay can be expanded upon while keeping the visuals next we have a vertical scrolling shooter a bullet hell kind of game uh, this is a very minimalistic example but can could be could be made into an interesting game this example is very interesting it's a uh, platformer where you can shoot around but you can also have the Mega Man like ability of holding the shoot button and having a more strong blast here uh, what is interesting here is the use of colors the use of the minimalistic let's say graphics for the scenario the particle effects look when I shoot on the floor there are some really neat particles around and yeah this could work as a as a mechanic to expand on different games This dungeon crawler is very interesting as well. Here is the classic, the enemies only move when you move and for each movement you kind of lose the HP. Also, whenever you hit the enemy, you basically are going to be pushing them around so you have to solve the puzzle at the same time that you explore the dungeon. Interesting, interesting concept. This 3D example is very complete. It's like a FPS game, but it's a stealth game. You have to hi hide from these towers. Let me show you what happens. So if I come in the front of the tower, the mission fails. What is interesting about this example is that it is fully 3D, even though the assets are quite minimal and easy to make. Pixel art here and there, flat textures and so on. So here we have some moving turrets, so, some turrets that are looking around. I can look at the mini map in order to know where the turrets are and where they are looking at. So it's a interesting stealth game that was put together quite rapidly there's this other turret here that moves so yeah with this we are here at the end of the level very interesting example so if we open the example here we can see the line of sights of the turrets which are basically sprites here and but these sprites have specific collision boxes here and yeah interesting example this is definitely an interesting idea to expand upon we're gonna see other fps's that can be merged with this one for a more interesting game like this one for example here foggy outbreak this is more of a visual prototype so here we have zombies that are sprite billboard based 
And in this example, I can't shoot, unfortunately, but the whole visual, the atmosphere with the fog and these zombies that are following you around, this can, can be quite an, an inspiration of an idea of a, a simplistic game that can be stealthy, where you have to save ammunition and so on. So quite interesting one. Worth checking out and, and looking especially at the, the art of the game. This is a local co-op game, like a couch multiplayer game. So the first thing is that this example didn't work with the keyboard, so I have to do some adjustments here to get the keyboard working instead of the gamepad. And yeah, there you go. So this could be expanded into a Smash Bros kind of game or a party game. Very interesting example. I can totally see this becoming a full blow game and with online multiplayer and so on. Very interesting example. Then we have this downwell inspired example where you have to jump and shoot. The visuals are really interesting. And the gameplay, yeah, a bit too similar to downwell in my opinion. This one is quite interesting. It's a hidden object game. So basically you see the objects here and the bottom, I got to find those in the map. So yeah, here's the money bag. And when I click on it, yeah, I got a check mark and then I have to look for the other objects. This may look simplistic, but it's quite relaxing and cozy gameplay. Actually, I couldn't put this one down before finding all the objects. Very cozy, very relaxing. Had to find all the objects. <laughs> and this example is quite similar to the game Hidden Folks that can be found on Steam. Hidden Folks is the same premise, but you have a bit more of interactions in the, with the environment. But the premise is quite the same and you can see here it's a very popular game and I'm not telling you to go out and copy hidden folks but just so that these ideas can inspire you to create your own game and to mix with other ideas that we're going to cover on this on this video so yeah there you go and here the last item the bananas so yeah level complete and looking at how this example was made it's, it's interesting that you can see here all the pieces how the the map was put together the different layers here and yeah very minimalistic but very interesting and here i i want to move these objects around and make this a bit more challenging yeah quite a good example this example right here is uh, another first person game and here we have a special goggles that allow us to see things in the dark and to see beyond what what our simple eyes can see so yeah I, took some time for me to find the goggles and they are in this red box here and yeah now with the goggles i can see all the items all the boxes and everything and when you go in this corridor right here everything gets dark but with the goggles you can see it's a sort of a puzzle puzzle sort of game this mechanic alone may not be much but this can be mixed with other gameplay for for some interesting interesting gameplay this one is quite nice there are a couple of games now that use this mechanic but I haven't seen one that is platformer. So I basically can choose pieces of the map here and move that around. So it's a mix of a puzzle platformer with a action game, perhaps it could be if you add some enemies. And here we can see that now I can go through the map here. We can go to the bottom part and reach the objective. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting mechanic and can be combined with, with other mechanics that we've seen in this video for, for some interesting results. Very nice. Yeah, so here, one thing that I tried and that is possible is to use physics here to, to jump from outside the map even. Yeah, quite nice. Now, Minesweeper is a classic. Of course, I'm not telling you to go out and make another Minesweeper, but the visuals here, the juice in this old school, old Windows-like environment is quite interesting. I've seen some games on Steam that use this aesthetic and yeah, yeah the aesthetics and the juice here are things that, that can be inspiring. Interesting, interesting example. Now let's take a look at this one. This, everybody already knows. So it's basically Portal here. Uh, in this example, what is missing for me is the use of a canvas in another camera to make the portals actually transparent so that you can see what's behind it. But yeah, th this is Portal. Like, maybe you can think of this as a mechanic to add to your game. I would never advise someone to make a Portal-like game, but adding Portal mechanics to another game, that could be interesting. That could be interesting. Now we have this snake shaped puzzle here. This one is very interesting. So basically you control this snake like creature, but there are physics that are going to make so that the snake falls down and you have to avoid the spikes by doing different shapes here. 
Um, there is a quite famous game that used this concept. Maybe you know about it. It's called Snake Bird. It's a very successful puzzle that it's a whole game built around this concept. Of course, I'm not telling you to copy Snake Bird, but think about this mechanic as in combination with other mechanics. One thing that I like a lot about this prototype is the visuals. You can see here that the slime stays on, on, on the scenario and there is different faces for different parts of the snake. Yeah, there, there's a lot that can be expanded upon with this concept. Quite a nice example. I really dig this one. It's a metal slug kind of game where it's kind of like a platform, but you can get into vehicles and the vehicles have multiple weapons like this machine gun right here, but also you can shoot with the cannon and you can get out of the vehicle so that you can keep exploring and so on. So yeah, I can hop into this other tank right here. So yeah, I, I picture a game that is multiplayer, different vehicles, maybe even a sort of a battlefield game where there's two teams fighting against each other. Really interesting. So vehicles to the game that, that could add a whole nother dimension of gameplay. I can totally see helicopters, cars, or maybe even mechas in a gameplay like this. This one is a classic. I bet most of you don't recognize this, but it's a sort of a mini game where basically I have to hit here the space bar really quickly to feel the, the power bar on the left. And this is going to be used to break this, this brick right here, like a martial arts style. Uh, I wouldn't bet the whole game in this, but this can be a kind of a mini game uh, is within a bigger idea. Similar to the Metal Slug like, in this one you control a tank. But here we have a 3D example. I really dig the visuals here. I can picture something like Company of Heroes, but with a more lo-fi aesthetic. And if you look here, we are just using primitive shapes and simple textures. And yeah, I can picture some billboard sprites of, of the enemies of the infantry. and and different vehicles and multiplayer and so on. So yeah, it's a quite simplistic example, but there's a lot that this can be expanded upon. This is an idea that uses pet fighting as a mechanic. You have the ability to call all of the chickens here and they're going to follow you with uh, using pet fighting. The idea here is that you have to avoid these foxes and yeah, it's a, just a one mechanic thing, but this can be merged with other mechanics and to an interesting puzzle. This prototype here is quite simplistic, it's more about exploring the environment, but the thing here is the visuals. It's all simplistic shapes with simple textures that are pixel based and quite interesting, but then you have one key here that you can use to switch the perspective to a first person camera. I can see how these visuals can, can be used for other genres of games and mixed with other ideas here. And this idea where you play part of the game in first person and part of the game as a third person style is quite interesting. Here we have a top-down game with a hook shot. So it's similar to a hook shot in a Zelda-like and this can pull you through so that you can explore the rest of the level. And if you shoot the hook shot in the wrong place, you're gonna fall down and basically have to start over again. This wouldn't work as a full game, but it's a mechanic that can be added to other games. So yeah, quite neat. And talking about Zelda-likes, in this example, you see how the camera movement can be interesting to show you parts of the level little by little, similar to what happens in a Zelda game. Very minimalistic, minimalistic graphics, but interesting, nevertheless. And of course, there's your classic tower defense. Tower defense is a quite overused concept, but of course, there's always this place to mix with other ideas. We're gonna see later on this video, but here in this example is just a classic tower defense that we can open up, see how it was made, and maybe even, even change some things here and there. And as I said, these prototypes are interesting because you can play with them and find what makes them interesting to play. Now we have a completely different genre. A horror game, Slenderman, get the pages type of game. This alone is a quite overused concept, but there are things here that we can reuse and merge with the other first person games that we saw. So let's take a look at mechanics right now. Mechanics that we can merge to make a more interesting game. First one, a sort of an attack that can be used for platforming. This is a interesting, simple mechanic to do so. Then uh, let's say these bubbles right here that you can use to explore the environment and to kind of solve puzzle-like situations uh, in a platformer. Then a folk that is going to copy your movements and run around you similar to what we've seen in Celeste. So this, this mechanic is, is, is not as complicated as it seems to be produced and it can add some spice to your game idea. 
then we have these platforms right here that you are able to control. I found this example quite interesting and I spent some time here controlling the platforms and yeah, it's another mechanic that can be an extra that can add some, some layer of interaction with, with the level. And once again, what, what I found interesting is that this is really fun to control and I wasn't expecting this, but just the, the looks. And this is the thing with, with this prototype. Sometimes just by looking at it, you can tell if it's fun or not to play. In this Metroid-like example here, it, it's all about the visuals, right? The bullet, the camera movement, the transition between one room to the other, all neat stuff that we can use to enrich our idea. Then here we have another hookshot example, but this time in a platformer, so you can use this hookshot to, to explore the level. Uh, quite interesting mechanic that, that can be used and, and expanded upon. And I really dig the visuals as well. Then what if you could freeze the enemies and use them as platform? That's what this example shows up how to do. It's not as easy as it looks, but yeah, quite interesting. And here we have a game where dashing is the main way you move around. I can see how this can be a precision puzzle-like platformer and yeah, maybe not a full game about dashing, but this, this can be an interesting addition to some section of the game or to a specific character. Another level traversal mechanic is the ability to inverse the gravity. In this example here, we can see how inverting the gravity creates a whole second level design where you have to think things from a different dimension. Interesting concept, something that can be added to a portion or to a whole game, actually. And in this example, we see the inversion of the gravity, but this other example I really dig. Here you can walk on walls and basically you can have four different directions for the gravity. I really spent some time on this example trying to beat this level to got to the end of the level and you can see here I can walk on different walls on the ceiling and everything so really neat example this mechanic can can be a great addition to your game idea also a jetpack could be an interesting idea this is a bit overused but could be could be interesting depending on the genre of the game This other level traversal mechanic was, was quite interesting to, to play with. Here we have these bubbles that allow me to kind of fly around and, and control the character traversing the level. They are quite difficult to get a hand off, but yeah, it, it's interesting. It's interesting. It can be an interesting addition for, for a platformer. Yeah, maybe not a full game about this, but yeah, it could be an addition. And here we have a bit of a different jump mechanic where basically you use this hammer right here to propulsion yourself up and forward so yeah not, not sure if I'm a huge fan of it but yeah could could work then we have a basic inventory here although you could make a game like backpack hero that's fully based on on this concept I think this is more of an addition to an existing game idea where now you have to manage items and, and resources and so on. Then we could add some spice with physics. In this example right here, you have this football or soccer-like uh, mechanic where you have to shoot this ball around, but it's it's fully physics-based. Yeah, I, I've seen some, some games that try to explore this, this mechanic. I'm not sure if this exactly is a good idea, but at least at least it shows how you can add some make physics to a platformer. Yeah. It, did, it, it was quite annoying to get this ball around in this, in this example, so I would advise pursuing this idea. Dashing is something that never gets old. It's a simple way of adding agency and reflex-based platforming. In this example, you have to activate these monsters and their respective platforms. The thing here is that there's some puzzle-like feature where the platforms can even trap you. Uh, I wish there was a reset button in this game. I really dig the visuals and of course this is a simple mechanic but that can be added on top of, of the game that you are making. This could also work in a top-down like game. So yeah, and I really dig the visuals. So we could, could expand upon this idea. Mm. 
Now for a shooter here, what we have is different weapons. So some idea of having a, a machine gun like a weapon and then a laser like and there is this missiles that follow the enemies. So yeah, maybe this is really basic stuff, but there are things to learn here. And once again, the minimalistic visuals and yeah, this mechanics, this, this different weapons could be added to, to some of the examples that we saw previously with the platforming, with the puzzle, with the dashing. Yeah, this could be an interesting combination. And then we have this boss fight. This is a very interesting example here. I have to avoid the attacks of the, the boss here while trying to hit his face. It, it's not as easy as it looks, trust me. I, I have to try it a number of times so that I could, could finally beat the boss here. And yeah, this, this idea is basically add big bosses to your game, make it so that the battle involves platforming as well. And combined with what we've seen so far, the vehicles, the different weapons, this could be really interesting. And then here we have an idea of a mechanic to move platforms around. I've seen a couple of games using this mechanic and maybe this can be mixed with the other, other stuff that we saw or with what you game already have. And yeah, this, this can be interesting. Interesting way, it could be a puzzle game or a way to customize the level somehow. Yeah, quite, quite interesting. And then in this example, we have level destruction. I'm, of course, the game don't have to be all about this, like Terraria or similar games, but maybe just for a portion of the game. I remember Earthworm Gene, which had a level that was based on this, based on level destruction, but it was just a specific level. So yeah, once again, another idea, another mechanic to, to mix and match with what you have and with the other ideas that we're seeing here today. This example is a bit confusing, but basically you have two levels, the foreground and the background, and you can switch between them. I can see how this can be used for a puzzle platformer like thing, but yeah, not that, not that great. And then the time traveling mechanic. Okay, we've seen Braid, we've seen other games use this, this mechanic, but yeah, maybe in combination with a few other ideas, this could become something unique. back to first person. So in this example here, we have a simple level. Once again, to show that simple shapes, simple textures can go a long way. And we have this weapon selector here that is kind of like uh, a disc with different options. I can imagine a head crab attacking the player right now. So <laughs> yeah, quite neat example. Once again, can be combined with what we've seen and yeah, became maybe a, a, a full game with the zombies, with the turrets and with what we've saw. This could be, this could be interesting. Here we have level traversal made um, different, like by hopping around, kind of like a, a frog, like you, you target where you want to go. Yeah, could, could be interesting for, for a level or for one specific section of the game. And then here we have a visual prototype just showing what we can do with sprites in a 3D environment. And this mechanic is, is quite interesting. This is another example that has been quite some time. You basically place these bombs and then are going to push you around the level. So you have to use this to, to be able to traverse the rest of the level. It's, it's quite interesting, quite interesting, fun to play with. And then here we have a puzzle that uses simplistic graphics and basically have to, to fill all the squares on the level uh, by dragging these boxes here. Yeah, I, I really dig the visuals. This isometric visuals, we're gonna see some other examples here, but yeah, I really dig the visuals and the simplistic mechanics as well. I can see this working as a mobile game or, or some sort. And then a racing game. This flat visuals, Z mode styles are back into fashion with, with the new F-Zero and so on. And yeah, this, this could be interesting. There's always uh, concepts to be added to racing games and, and things that can look like racing games, but they're not, not exactly with cars. And this is the thing about these ideas. It is things that you can add and mix with other concepts to get interesting games. Here's an example. Racing mechanics, completely different game. Okay, here we see a puzzle game where you have to traverse the level. And yeah, I can totally see this being a level or even a, a complete game with, with these mechanics and, and some, some other additions. So yeah, interesting. And talking about 
specific levels. This uh, example right here show how a minigame could work. I can picture a fishing minigame or mining minigame. Yeah, the, the theme here is, is more about mining. But yeah, um, the, the juice on this one, the animations, the effects, there's some blur and zoom, camera shake and so on. I think this, this example here is, is really interesting, really interesting. So yeah, think of this as a minigame or an idea to be expanded upon. Really interesting. And then you have your Endless Runner. Here we see a car theme in Endless Runner. Not my cup of tea, but yeah, could, could also be an addition. And we have this game with Baba Is You visuals here, where basically you have this different dimension here and you can shoot to see the enemies that are uh, not, not visible uh, otherwise. So yeah, interesting mechanic to have, yeah. And then a beat em up, oh, yeah. This, this is a bit more difficult to mix with the other ideas that we've seen so far, as it is actually a whole genre. And talking about a whole genre, why not an RTS? The visuals here are lacking, but if we think of this gameplay with the visuals that we've seen in the other prototype, we could totally have a lo-fi version of Company of Heroes. That is a game I would buy for sure. <laughs> then we have this mini game, could work as a mobile game to, to avoid these schools and so on. And this 3D snake game is really bad. <laughs> I really don't like this. This one shows the importance of playing the prototypes. And this is what I like about this exercise. We are playing the prototypes. The idea, 3D snake, sounds good. But when you actually play it, you realize that it is bad. It doesn't work. Contrary to that, we have here a full example of a GTA kind of game. If you play GTA 1 or GTA 2, this is pretty much it. The, the, the good thing here is that, once again, we can could spend on this, we could do in a different setting, uh, different gameplay, you could have like a, a full simulation or a more RPG style of game where you have different vehicles and so on. So I, I really dig this minimalistic visuals. And yeah, this is quite an homage to the classic GTA games. Really, really nostalgic to me to, to be able to play this, this prototype right here. Yeah, and we could leave the car here and explore the alleys and yeah, very interesting here. The, the map on the top left and so on. And I, I really looked into this one so we can see here the collision of the car and while you shouldn't straight up copy GTA, there's plenty of directions you can explore with a similar style of gameplay. You could also make your game 2.5D. Take your 2D game and just add a bit of a third dimension to it and yeah, you get completely different visuals. In this prototype right here, you can switch dimensions. So you have the negative space to explore and this helps you traverse the world. And yeah, the visuals here are maybe a bit too much, uh, in my opinion at least, but yeah, the gameplay is, is, is interesting. And then another isometric game. I really like this one. The, the visuals are perfect and the gameplay is, is quite simplistic, but uh, yeah, the, the visual at least reminds me of those tactics games and I would prefer it if it was, it was a tactic, tactics game. So yeah, interesting, interesting one. Yeah, could be expanded upon as, as all the others. Then your classic twin stick shooter. The visuals of this one are borrowed from the Bomberman example that we saw. And what this makes me think about is how we could mix and match these different ideas, different mechanics to get something unique. Also, I really dig the bullet capsules on the floor uh, this, this example here uses a canvas so that they can get unlimited capsules on the floor. Another twin stick shooter that we have in these examples is this one. I really dig the visuals using 3D uh, with billboards here uh, to a minimalistic but, but kind of a, a appealing graphics. And the gameplay is also, also interesting here. So I have to avoid these creatures while unlocking the different doors. I could totally see a Zelda-like or a Diablo-like with this visual style. And I love how a slight adjustment of projection can make a game look like old school or more immersive with the perspective and so on. This, this example really shows the difference it makes. So yeah, think on experimenting with this for your next game. Here's another idea. Destructible terrains. Could work as a mechanic. Yeah, why not? 
a first person shooter where you use a bow and arrow. Yeah, this reminds me of Turok, the dinosaur hunter. Here's another driving game and I could totally picture you leaving the car and getting your bow and arrow. Another top-down game where you, you have to jump on top of the ships and maybe we could get inside of one of them. Yeah, that, that could be a, a direction that we could expand this upon. And I really dig the visuals of this one. Very Hollow Knight-like. The movement of the plants when you touch them, the, the particle effects all around the screen, the lightning and everything. The, the mood. Uh, this one I had to take a look to see how it was made. Really well put together. Reminds me a lot of Hollow Knight. And here we have an on-rails shooter. By itself, it's maybe too simplistic, but there are quite popular games on this genre, and this can be mixed with different genres, with upgrades, with inventory, with why not, multiplayer, and so on. So yeah, this works as a base, but there's a lot to expand upon. A lot to expand upon. Yeah, this one is huge. Demon Noir is a Zelda like game and it's basically a, a complete game that you can uh, find into this library of, of examples. Here you have a shop where you can buy uh, items, you have many different types of enemies, uh, different rooms and different uh, puzzles to solve, let's say. So not so much of an inspiration, but maybe uh, something that you can learn from by looking at how it was made. Uh, by looking at the, how the enemies work, maybe you can draw some inspiration out of it and picture some of the, the different mechanics that we saw uh, being applied to it. So yeah, here I open it on the editor and you can see the boss room here, we can skip directly to the boss fight. So yeah, this is more of a full game, but it's worth looking at, especially to borrow ideas on how to put together some of the mechanics that can work through any top-down game. We can think of these examples as a sort of a playground for creativity. Check them out, see how they work, and think how they fit in a bigger picture. How you can mix multiple mechanics, what works, what doesn't, and maybe you find a hook for your next game. If you are enjoying the video so far, don't forget to hit the like button and also to subscribe for more game dev content. Let's continue as we have hundreds of ideas next. 300 mechanics. Now, if you're craving more inspiration, then you should check out 300 Game Mechanics. This website has been my go-to for years. Sean Howard, the brains behind it, has documented 268 game mechanics and ideas, and this list keeps growing. There's a treasure of concepts here. Sean ideas are described in details, and they can be used as is, or they can be altered and mixed for something completely unique. Sean is a fan of tactics, turn-based, and system-based games. So you find that the ideas are often about systems to structure the game, to structure the gameplay itself. Really good stuff. Here are some examples. Imagine a character creation mechanic that revolves around combining cards. The catch is that you don't have access to all the cards from the get-go. It's not a groundbreaking idea, but it could definitely help with replayability. A roguelike where you merge characters, blending their abilities, but also their weaknesses. An MMORPG tycoon kind of game. This idea was posted in 2007, and it was implemented a couple of years ago. I've seen a couple of games using this concept already, of running a game like an amusement park, but I still think there is room for this idea to be applied to other genres of games. How about a beaten up with a strategic layer? Picture a game with two distinct layers of gameplay, action combat and strategy. A multiplayer game with the four angles of gravity that we saw earlier. This could make for a fun couch multiplayer game. Picture a game where players have a say in the procedural generation using collectible cards. It's a simple to use interface that allows players to shape how the game world is generated. Moving on, we have a 2D game played on the surfaces of a 3D world map. It would offer top-down or side-scrolling gameplay depending on where on the map the player is. An open world game that is represented in an abstract manner. This artistic choice could expand the scope of a game by minimizing the need of extensive art assets. Interesting for game developer and small dev teams. Now picture a Starship Tamagoshi. Kinda like FTL, but with a more laid-back vibe. It's an interesting concept that could be part of a larger game. And this is one of my favorites. A strategy game based on connected nodes or graphs. 
I even made a prototype using this idea. Next, a zombie apocalypse survivor with an overworld management layer. Each map location is a dungeon. Throw in the card-based procedural generation we saw earlier and you got a quite replayable concept. How about a multiplayer narrative, choose your own adventure game? It's a challenging concept, but it could work. Picture a tower defense game that is played on multiple layers. Almost like multiple separate tower defense games being played simultaneously, but with some complexity when the different layers overlap. A dungeon crawler with decals that can alter the environment. What about a 2D game that has a third dimension mostly based on cylinders, like some old games? And speaking of old school, how about an ASCII art game that has depth? It would be an interesting homage to the old school roguelikes while offering an interesting art style. Now imagine combining and augmenting these ideas. The possibilities are endless and hey, there are many more game mechanics and ideas on this website. Check out 300 mechanics, the links in the description. Okay, do you need even more ideas? So head over to r slash game ideas on Reddit. Sure, there's a mix of quality there, meaning there are many bad ones, but trust me, Hitting among these posts, there are some absolutely gems. It's like a game idea bazaar, so it may take some time to find something worth it, but you definitely can find some awesome ideas there. Here are some examples. An online space sci-fi game with idle mechanics. This could even be a web-based game. A Biting of Isaac style game, but in first-person shooter mode. How about a farm sim set in a SpongeBob-like world? An open world boomer shooter. I think this could be interesting. A survivor crafting game, but in an urban environment, instead of in nature. How about a Pikmin inspired game, but with chickens? Kinda like the movie Chicken Run. Yeah, it sounds like a great idea to be honest. What the hell? R slash game ideas is like a brainstorm party where everyone is invited. Interesting stuff. Now, if you want to learn how to come up with your own ideas, I got a couple of recommendations for you. Ask Game Dev has a fantastic video on having good ideas and Jonas Tyroller made a video on the subject, considering scope, visibility, audience, etc. Trust me, these videos are a gold mine of wisdom for anyone diving into the world of game development. Check them out, you won't be disappointed. Another important concept that Jonas talks about in his later videos is Game Appeal. According to Jonas, Game Appeal is one of the most important components of a good game idea. He's very experienced in the indie scene, so I definitely think you should listen to what he has to say about it. And there you have it. A list of prototypes to play with, resources to fuel your creativity fire, and that's all. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content. See you next time.